As I've said a hundred times before, we should not be segregating or discriminating against any member of the public because of the color of their skin, their religious beliefs, or their sexual preferences. This is a crucial statement that should also apply when dealing with offenders who have broken the law. Instead, it has become evident that in many cases, the law has demonstrated leniency and has been influenced by such factors when dealing with the certain individuals. Numerous special interest groups raise concerns and claim unfair targeting when a member of their group is charged with a crime, or it simply goes unnoticed by the authorities. While I do agree that such situations do occur occasionally, it is important to note that they are more of an exception rather than the rule. This disparity in treatment has resulted in a lack of equality under the law for certain individuals, even though Section 15 in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in Canada specifically addresses equal rights. It states, Every individual is equal before and under the law and has the right to the equal protection and equal benefit of the law without discrimination, and in particular, without discrimination based on race, national, or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, age, or mental or physical disability. In my humble opinion, to ensure this principle of equality under Section 15 is effectively upheld all police officers and individuals within the judicial system must be committed to its reinforcement. A crime is a crime, regardless of one's racial, ethnic background, or sexuality, and I believe is crucial to treat all individuals equally under the law. As politicians representing all levels of government, municipal, provincial, and federal, it is our primary responsibility as community leaders to ensure the safety and well-being of the people. It is imperative that municipalities in partnership with the police establish a comprehensive data collection system that captures relevant information about criminal behavior, including demographics, reoccurring patterns, and modus operandi, which is the method of operation. You might know it as MO and make it accessible to the public so they are aware of what is happening in their neighborhoods. This can better prepare citizens by increasing their awareness and understanding of how they can be more vigilant and proactive, able to recognize the warning signs and reporting suspicious activities to the authorities. Pickering is becoming accessible for crime, and I believe it's time that we, as leaders in the community, initiate a formal review, examining potential patterns and implement targeted strategies to protect our community from the devastating impacts due to crimes. Pickering has seen an influx not only in white collar crimes, which are nonviolent offenses, but in juvenile crimes, organized crimes, drug crimes, property crimes, and violent crimes. We have homicides, shootings, attempted murders, violent gun crimes, car thefts, break and enters, robberies, gangs, drug trafficking, and human trafficking. And it's time that we develop an action plan and an awareness plan that will help put an end to all of this. Now is also a good time to ask our governments to review our current bail reform and mandatory sentences so we can restore faith in our justice system as this catch and release, so to speak, program is clearly not working. It is essential to implement or reinstate stricter laws that not only will act as a deterrent to potential offenders, but it will also help us ensure that those who have committed multiple offenses face appropriate consequences for their actions. Our current program allows many offenders to be released back into the community some the very same day that they were arrested without adequate consequences. Without consequences, some of the individuals who are released continue to engage in criminal behavior, including an escalation to more serious and violent crimes. This process potentially undermines the principles of justice and fails to provide any kind of deterrent for many, leaving our communities vulnerable to further violence that could have easily been avoided. I humbly ask elected officials at all levels of government to join in demanding that offenders be treated equally under the law, regardless of their skin color, religious beliefs, or their sexual preferences. 
to review current bail reforms and mandatory sentences, and that all municipalities, in partnership with the authorities, establish a user-friendly comprehensive data collection system that captures relevant information about criminal behavior, including demographics, reoccurring patterns, and modus operandi. And lastly, to make this information accessible to the public every month so that not only the people of Pickering are aware of what's happening in their neighborhoods, but people throughout Durham and the GTA as well. I truly believe that better communication and awareness between law enforcement, municipalities, and the public will lead to faster response times, increased apprehension of offenders, and ultimately create safer communities for everyone. I've included links below to specific examples and how to reinforce that we can no longer stay silent on these most important matters. Again, it is our primary responsibility as community leaders to ensure the safety and the well-being of the people. I'm Councillor Lisa Robinson. Stay safe and God bless.